What's up, YouTube? Top City 5401 here. <laughs> I got Aaron Davis in the house. <laughs> yeah. We were we were chatting on the phone earlier today, and then we said, hey, man, let's just go live because we just keep talking about cards, showing cards, and it's a lazy Tuesday afternoon. It's hot out here on the West Coast, the best coast. What's up, Joey brings it. And, uh, yeah, we're just having a good time showing off some cards. So, Aaron, I'll let you start off. Um, as many of you know, Aaron's getting ready to move, and he's packing his cards up. So, uh, you know, he wants to take one last peek at them before, before he goes to his new house. Yeah, let's, so. just, let's just rummage, man. Oh. So here's a, a mad, here's, a, here's a mad bum. Mad bum in the house. Yes, sir. Got the National Chick-fil-A. I got the uh, tops insert. But. Yeah, I love this card, man. It's a unique design, uh, but beautiful uncard autograph, man, of of Mad Bum. Yeah, mine's That's a sticker a auto. You know, the thing about Mad Bum and what I love is, as a Giants fan, his performance in the postseason is phenomenal, absolutely oh. phenomenal. Oh, I love that guy, man. So it was probably one of the best performances I've ever seen, man. I mean, it was incredible to watch him. And, you uh, know, he was in the 2010, the 2012, and the 2014 World Series. He's 5-0 and in the World Series with a five-inning save on top of that. Yep. And I remember his first World Series start was Halloween 2010. And we were out trick-or-treating, and the Giants were playing the Angels. I mean, not the Angels. Um, the um, Rangers, and, uh, and I just, I don't know, man. It was, it was just a great time, man. So, yeah. but, so what's up? Uh, we got b Roth 6 here. So what's up, Brian? <laughs> so, what's, up? Oh, what's up, Brian? Man, we've had, we've had some good times uh, at the National, Brian and I, and I remember the, uh, the year you and I met up at the National, Aaron, we spent a lot of time hanging out with uh, with Brian there in Chicago. Yeah, that's my yeah. brother right there, man. Yeah, brother from yeah. another mother, man. So good to see you in here, Brian. So I we're just doing a random right rummage. So uh, got this is my one and only uh, Ken Griffey Jr. autograph card. Sweet. Yeah, on card auto number to fifty. When I was getting my Griffey uh, auto, I wanted to make sure that I got one with him on the Mariners uniform. And, yeah. And I was thinking that way before I realized that most Griffey collectors only want him in a Mariners uniform. But I'm saying most Griffey collectors, not not all Griffey collectors. So yeah. Brian agrees that it was unforgettable that year at the National. So this is a – uh, uh, me. Look at that one, Nate. That's a black refractor. Ooh. Out of uh, Bowman Sterling of um, Santana. God, that's beautiful. Carl, so that's, I, think this one, I think this one's numbered out of 25. Yeah, 25. So he, he's the uh, Rollades Relief Man of the Year, right? <laughs> no, Carl Santana? Oh, okay. That's Santana. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, it's a beautiful card. Love that one, man. Now, here, here are some cards that are starting to get some hobby love. They used to be not not huge hobby love, but these uh, – here, I'll focus the camera on me real quick. But these Tim Lincecum uh, are just the prism cards in general. Yeah, those are sweet, man. Uh, I love this die cut. I think this one – yeah, this one's numbered to 60. But you got to appreciate the shine. I mean, Prism really takes that chrome refractor technology and, and makes it a lot of fun. Absolutely. And you, this isn't going to pick up on the etching because I don't have the best lighting in here. But, oh, man, I love this one, too. This one, that uh, purple. Yeah. But just a beautiful card there. And then we got the uh, another orange, re, or, or orange parallel from Prism. So that one's awesome. So yeah, that's sick, that's right. man. Yeah. Thank you. Here's a uh, here's a update glossy rookie. 
of uh, Greg Maddox. <laughs> That's awesome. That's probably the key card from that 87 uh, FLIR update set. Is that one or the McGuire glossy? But It's crazy, man. I, I, you know, I got so many of these, Nate, right here. I just, these, what I pulled out is, is all Beckett's Labs. Um, wow. That I had from years and years ago. I mean, I got, look at this one. Here's oh, the, uh, check it out. Oh, yeah. Rodriguez, yeah. that's just that's just a bitching shot, man. That is that that shows like his, his, him uh, wrapping up his swing. Love that card. Yeah, Fleer update. Remember that card was hot at one point. And then uh, how about this one? This one is a uh, this one is sick, man. Yeah, let's check it out. How about the Joe Mauer? Ooh, man, that's beaut. Yeah, I love those old uh, Bowman Chrome refractors. Yeah, Joe Mauer. Uh, refractor auto man this one was that's a tough card to get man you can yeah that's beauty right there you weren't messing around when you said i'm going to show some stuff off i've never shown before here's one uh here's here's another uh all-time great giant matt kane look at that oh yeah dude i that love that patch auto i love matt kane man he's he's so underrated man you know, you can't take anything away from what he did for the Giants. And, I mean, he pitched a perfect game the whole the whole nine. That guy is awesome. Here's a guy that's getting some attention, man, Trevor Bauer. Here's his uh, refractor, his uh, first Bowman refractor. Wow. Nice one. Yeah. I've had that one in the collection for a while now. Now here's one you you'll probably uh, recognize, Aaron. Little smoke. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Dave Stewart, man. This guy oh, when I was goodness. a kid, and I've shared this story before, and I'll share it again. He was my favorite pitcher. I was a huge A's fan. I grew up in the East Bay, and I used to take Bart to the A's games, and Dave Stewart had that stare when he was looking at the, uh, you know, looking in at the batter and the catcher and yeah. he will, he will intimidate the hell out of you. But the ironic part is when you hear him talk, he has like a very timid voice. <laughs> and I was able to meet him earlier this year and he's just a fantastic, fantastic guy, man. That's awesome. one of my wow. Wow. Now, I don't consider myself a Dave Stewart super collector or anything, but I do have quite a few of his autograph cards. Beautiful. Oh, and then man. actually, I'll show here. Uh, here, I'll show all of them. I got like, I got quite a few of his autos. They're really easy to get because they're not that expensive. They're so, yeah, they're so awesome, man. Tops tribute, man. Those years were just beautiful. Yeah, and then you got you to gotta appreciate the Sweet Spot Classics. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. That's a nice ballpoint pen autograph. Absolutely. I, mean, this one, I made this one with um, Dave Kamiki. I traded uh, this card with him. I had like a Mets auto that he wanted, and he had shown that one off, so we made a trade. And then this is the one Stuart signed for me. Yeah, that what a perfect card, man. That came out yeah. so good. Yeah, beautiful card there. So... So what's up, Big Harv? And then we got a uh, vintage 90s collector. And he says he met Dave Stewart and he was awesome. So, yeah, big time, man. Oh, uh, there you go. Big you know, Hurt. Frank Thomas here, man. I think I'm – did you buy that at the National or – for no. some reason? Okay. No, this one right here I've had in the, any – like all these Beckett slabs, man, these are from – you know, years back that I've had in the collection for quite some time. Okay, yeah. And then uh, I know a few of them showed up at my house. There we go, Pedro Martinez. Remember him and what was it, the 2000 All Star game? And at Fenway? Absolutely. So, love that card. Love Pedro Martinez. And and you know what? You know what? what oh yeah, beautiful card there, Aaron. Wow. Those are Griffey. Yeah, that's that's a fantastic Griffey. So, and then here we go. Here's another Pedro. Now you gotta love a uh, an American League pitcher with a bat relic. 
<laughs> but that's yeah, why we love baseball yeah, cards. Like it says, uh, it, it says that he used this bat. I wonder how many other players use the bat that Pedro used. So this is like a multiple player bat relic card, right? There's oh, a, man. Uh, there's a Deion Ooh. Sanders. You know, Neon Dion, man. You know who you know who uh, super collects Dion is uh, John. Um, yeah, yeah, JVP. Yeah, he's a he's a big Neon Dion uh, Sanders collector. What up, John? If you watch this archived, man. And to your whole, so what's up? I remember, man. If you were collecting in '89, this set was it, man. Yeah, you I'm have Barry big. Sanders and you have Troy Aikman in that set. Yep, Barry Sanders, Troy Aikman, you got uh, Tim Brown, you had Michael Irvin. There was just so oh many God. Hall of Famers. Yeah. Um, it's coming out of the set. Yep. Here's another one. I, check this one out. This was funny. I, I, I didn't even realize I had that one. <laughs> yeah, we were talking yesterday, and you were like, look, what, I, I didn't know I had an Iverson rookie. Oh, check this crazy. one out here. One of the best refractor sets of all time, 1998 Whoa. Bowman's best. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Who's your daddy? Those cards are so freaking beautiful, man. Yeah, I love them. How about I, the, I, guess, uh, I can't get enough of the 90s shine, man. Love look, it. Look at, look at that one, Nate. How about a, Ooh, how about a 1970 yeah, the, uh, OJ Simpson? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's his rookie uh, glossy insert. Yes, that's a fantastic card. Check this one out. The juice. Oh yeah. So, that's so guys, sweet. just in case people are wondering, like I'm known as a as a bonds collector, but Aaron and I, we were talking before we we went went live. He says, I want to see your pictures box because I had done a video showcase a few days ago and I was showing off a bunch of my pictures. And, and Aaron, he's you're 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 a big fan of pitchers. Oh, I love pitchers, man. Yeah. Here we go. Check this out. Oh, Ooh, Kristen Yelich. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, there's a Kristen Yelich. I bet you I bet you bought that card for like 20 bucks back back when you got it, huh? <laughs> yeah, I didn't pay much at all for it. <laughs> That's when oh, Yelich was a nobody. Look at that, man. Look at look, look at the number in. Oh man, that's sweet, man. Yeah, these cards are cool, man. I like them. You could put a rainbow together on them. So, how about an Aroldis Chapman? Look at this one. That baby's nice. Wow. Damn. Yeah, yeah that is a great looking card. Here we go, uh, Hall of Famer. Yeah, buddy. Probably. The greatest San Francisco giant pitcher, either him or Mad Bum, depends if you're if you're going by overall resume or if you're including postseason resume. But another OJ rookie. I think I got about. I think I got about four OJ rookie cards here. Yeah, you you like OJ. Here's another. Oh, yeah. I didn't know I had this card. I forgot I had this. How do how do I? I know we were talking about this guy earlier. Yeah, buddy. Gaylord there we go. Man, dude, I'm telling you, man, it's ridiculous, man. Uh, the st the prices that you can get Gaylord Perry's autographs for, man. I mean, I. I don't know, man. I'm, That's probably I'm so, a ten, I probably paid like ten bucks for that card. I bet. Yeah, it's like it's crazy, man. Remember the old Cognacs from twenty eleven? Yeah. Oh man, it's such a beautiful card, man. God, yeah, it's a beautiful card. Yeah, gotta Perfect love that too. Here's another cheap autograph of a Hall of Fame pitcher. Yeah, Jim Palmer. Yeah, you can get his autos for like, I don't know, ten bucks. Yeah. Here's a. Here's uh, Here's a Ooh. Warren Moon. I this love those. Is that 86? Like, I know nothing about football cards unless it's like from like between like 80, 84 through like 90. Well, you know what, Nate? This is this set is so tough to grade. This is like uh, the 71 in baseball. This would be the equivalent of that because those black borders, they, it chips real easy. 
very, very tough car, uh, card to get. Any card from this set is tough to get in high grade. Yeah, I know that Joe Montana from that set is, uh, you know, a very popular card because of the black border. Probably yeah. along with all the Hall of Famers. There's uh, Satchel. Yeah, man. So, love that card. Here's another Aroldis. So, you got two oh. of these. Well, actually, this is the refractor version. Nice. So, I don't know. But these are all, Nate, these are all Beckett slabs that I've had in the collection for years. So, I just, I'm just showing them, man. Yeah, they're beautiful. There's a Tom Glavin. When you came and visited me, I remember. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. So, look at that Cueto. Oh, so, uh, oh that yeah, the uh, Cueto uh, refractor rookie. That's great. I think I have that card too. Um, I don't know. I think I have that one, Aaron. Let me see. I remember seeing it when I went through my rummage the other day. Keep showing. I remember when this card was hot, man, in football. Amari Cooper. This is the yeah. <laughs> so Beckett, like, I know a lot of people don't talk about this much, but do you remember when Beckett first came out? And um, and uh, their their slabs tended to be more popular than the um than the the, the PSA slabs. Remember that. Definitely. What's up, what's up, Ray from Philly? Definitely. Hey, Ray. And then all of a sudden, PSA slabs. I remember about four or five years ago, I was getting the Gem Mint 10 Bonds cards, and I was picking up the Beckett ones for like half the price of the PSA. And right. I thought I was getting a good deal, and then I realized afterwards that that's, that, that's just like a trend in the hobby, right? It, that wasn't like anything unusual. So that was the first time I realized. Here goes some Eckersleys. Do I? I think I. I hope I got an Eckersley up. I do. Yeah. Okay. I'll show off uh, my favorite closer of all time, and I did get to meet him when I met Dave Stewart, Dennis Eckersley. This guy. Now oh, let me tell yeah. you something about Dennis Eckersley. That's a fantastic. He product. is so cool with his fans. He's just a. He's a cool cat, man. Eckersley's a, a cool dude, man. But there we go. We got got that one. I I, bought, I got this one at my LCS, and I think I traded this one with a local uh, guy locally here in uh, in my neck of the woods. Yeah. Let's see if I can remember where I picked up all my X at. So this one I bought off a guy on Facebook a long time ago. I I think it was Polly Cavelli, the Cavelli Cards R Us. If anybody remembers him. Beautiful. So one off him. This one I bought on eBay for I think I got this card, Aaron, if you could believe it. I got this card for like two or three bucks. Wow. And that's within the last year. A nice refractor there. Wow. This one I probably bought for like a dollar fifty, and probably because he's in a, a St. Louis Cardinal uniform. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's a great card, man. I think I pulled this one out of a pack, but I'm not sure. A mini Gypsy Queen, number to 99. Yeah, those are, those are tough pulls, man. Check this card out. I was just buying, like, this one guy listed a bunch of cards on eBay, mm -hmm. numbered 15 of 15. Yeah. And I just bid on all his stuff, you know, for combined shipping, and I won a bunch of his cards. I probably got this card for like two bucks, uh, Eck number to 15. Wow. Incredible, man. Gorgeous. Yeah, so love the, love the Eckersley. Man, that guy was so fantastic in, from my childhood. Here's another uh, – this is another PSA 10 Marshall Falk rookie out of SP. Yeah, he, he, was, he was an exciting football player, man. Oh, yeah, man. I got a chance to watch him play on probably eight different times when he played for uh, San Diego State. 
And, uh, man, I got to tell you, this guy was incredible to watch. I mean, just phenomenal. I went to one game, Nate, where he rushed for like 420 yards or something like that. It, 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 <laughs> just, it, just, it just seemed like every time he touched the ball, man, he just was in the end zone. That's, that's, that's nuts. Here's a, uh, here's a Felix Hernandez, King Felix. There's some Randy Johnson rookies. You got to love these score. Those ones are yeah. tough to find. Absolutely. And then, oh, oh man. How about this one, Nate? <laughs> yes. That's a oh, beauty right there. For the win. Yes. I love that card. You got a 9-5, too. That's nice, man, because that has a black border. Ooh. Yeah, baby. Those are tough because the centering on those classic, is that the green or the yellow back? No, it's the yellow back. Yeah, those it, the green and the yellow backs are so tough because the centering on those cards, a lot of them are just have really bad centering. Oh, there we yeah, go. There's a Kershaw. Look at that one. Wow. That's from the 2006 Bowman, right? Yeah. Uh, that, that's a prospect card, I guess. Love that one. Here's a uh, – this is a Maddox uh, Tiffany from 87 traded. Nice. Yeah. You can't tell it's a Tiffany, but, you know, people always ask, like, what – how can you tell that a card's a Tiffany? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of the penny sleeve and I'll kind of show. So if anybody watches this archived or watching live. Oh, you know what? This isn't the Tiffany. All right, I'll have to get a Tiffany out. Here's uh, the dinosaur. Oh, yeah. Jackie, Jackie we Slater. talk about that card every once in a while. I remember when I was a kid, I'd go to the card shop, and those things were real expensive, but now they are now they can be had for a, a song and a dance. Yep. All right. Look at this. Here, here's our old Kurt. Look at that Kurt Schilling, man. You know, you know what I love about the um, – the 1989 Donruss Kurt Schilling rookie card. Yeah. Is, that is his only rookie card. And that is so unusual for that uh, time frame. Oh, yeah. Is that the glossy or the regular? No, it's the glossy. Okay. That one, I, that one you need to, uh, you need to um, put in a bubble mailer and send it out my way. <laughs> That's what you always say, right? <laughs> So here's the Tiffany here. You got the Tiffany? Yeah, this one's a Tiffany. See how it has that real high gloss here, just so right. people know. Because a lot of people don't realize. But it has that high gloss, real high gloss. So that, that kind of demonstrates it. It's not a matte finish. It's a high gloss finish. Yeah, that's so all the Tiffanys fair. have that. It's almost like... Someone uh, put shellac all over the cards or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. This is old David Price, man. Uh, Very nice. Refractor. That's a nice card. New Hall of Famer, Andy Pettit. Rookie. Whoa. Rookie card. What is this one? Here's a. Oh, yeah. Nice. I probably found this in a dollar box, and I was like, I think that's his rookie. So I just picked it up, and sure enough, it was his rookie card. So, oh, yeah, Ray from Philly says, Schilling will get in soon. I, 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 to be honest, I just was assuming he was in. I, I know he's going to get in. Him and Bonds and, and Clemens are probably all going to get in, like, the last year of eligibility. These Smith rookies. Remember, uh, we'd be talking with Xavier a couple of years ago, and – we were all blown away that this guy wasn't in the Hall of Fame. It took him forever to get in. Yeah, it's crazy, man. So, one of my tough, this one, this one, uh, this is a really tough rookie card uh, to get in high grade here, Nate. This one's from uh, 2004, uh, Flair Tradition. That's the green parallel which was a super, super short print in the set. But this one has uh, Ben Rosslenberger, um, uh, Philip Rivers, and uh, Eli Manning, their rookie year. 
Wow. You talk about three guys that made a name for themselves in the NFL and they're all quarterbacks. Yeah, that's a super, super tough short print. Um, nice card, Aaron. To get, but. Yeah, here we go. I got one of, one of, one of the all-time greats, Ernie Banks. Yeah, buddy. I love this card. Absolutely. Absolutely beautiful right there. And then this card, you know, you, you, Aaron, you know I love the 83 top set. I think Ray from Philly knows that, too. We've talked about that a little bit. Yeah. But I love uh, the Silver Pack Redemption, um, 83 tops. Yeah, that's a wonderful card. Kind of, these cards are just ridiculously beautiful. And then a couple of more numbered uh, Ernie Banks. Let's play two. There you go. 511 career home runs. So. Here's a... Uh... Some old football and baseball, but I found this one in that box too. Here's a Ronald Acuna. Wow, nice. A little chrome action there. Yeah, that's the the tops chrome. Is that the update or I don't I don't know too much about his rookies. Yeah, I think I think this might be the update. Okay. But uh, that was in there. Here's my childhood dream. Here, I, I to be honest, I don't even know how many of these I had, but. This is like, this is like what a junkie I am with baseball cards. When it comes to '80s rookies, you could have, <laughs> you could never have enough Ken Griffey Jr. '89 yeah. upper deck rookie cards. I, I I just can't. I can I can never have enough. I I could keep collect. I I could have twenty of these and I I'd want more. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So whenever I see one and it's like twenty bucks or. You know, I mean, I even picked one up for 10 bucks at a show once. I always pick them up, you know. But, I mean, it's a classic card. They're they're not that expensive if you buy them raw. And it's just a beautiful image, you know, of the kid. Here's another uh, Dick Buckets rookie. Oh, nice. Yeah, you I know, got, I got like three of these. Aaron, you know, you know I'm not a big football fan card guy but man i'm telling you when it comes to the vintage football cards i love them i love i love those vintage football cards especially the ones that have those colorful borders and just those classic images you know the golden and we talked about this the golden age of uh, football right i don't i don't think i've ever showed this one on camera uh, let's check it out check this one is that uh mule subtles yeah exactly oh, Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. This one's, That's this one's amazing. Of, uh, that that card, Aaron, is absolutely stunning. Yeah, out of uh, Love it. Na National Treasures. Wow. That is fantastic. You know, wait, let's check that card out. I want to I want to I want to give a little more airtime. Man, that thing is beautiful. Yeah, it's a short it's a short print of five. Wow. But uh, it's just beautiful, man. This is the thing. This is where I just give Panini their props, man, because they really, really uh, feature and highlight guys that, uh, you know, tops don't necessarily show in their products. Guys that are from the Negro Leagues, um, various Hall of Famers. I mean, but this is just this is just a wonderful card, man. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know who Mule Suttles is. I and I learned about him when Xavier did a video about him, and then I went up and, and Tops actually made a card of him a while ago, and I picked it up. But that that card right there, Aaron, is an absolute stunner. Yeah, yeah, I love that card, man. See, look, my addiction for Griffey rookies. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many Griffey rookies I have, but I've, I'm always acquiring them. I can never have enough. That's that's the junkie in me, you know. Absolutely. Here's, a, here's I mean, another Orlando Tapeta rookie. Oh, beautiful, Aaron. I got a love that card. A couple of these too. Oh, that card is a crispy stunner right there, man. Oh, yeah, I love that card, man. Fantastic. Billy Williams. Oh yeah, that's that's a great card. 
You know who I want to get from that set it, I, is the uh, Ron Santo. Up oh, there, <laughs> there you go. You busted out. <laughs> right, right as I was saying it. That, is. I love that card, and, and I'd like. To, you know, I, I watched a, a documentary about him one time, mm-hmm. and they were talking about how he was diabetic and and he was having a rough time sometimes with his diabetes. Here's a, here's a um. Here I am. I'm talking about two things at one time. But anyways, going back to Ron Santo, how how he would play through the diabetes and how dominant he was, you know, in the the ten year span, he's like the best player, best third baseman for sure in baseball. And why mm-hmm. it took so long to get in the Hall of Fame, I just don't know. So yeah, now can. I'm moving on. Now this these cards here, these are the this is from '89 score. And this card is really tough to find. These probably are maybe Griffey's rarest rookie card besides the Tiffany's. Yeah. You don't see them very often. But it's yeah. a, a box set that Score did that, that didn't do too well at the time. Uh, the young superstars, Griffey rookie. Oh, my. I didn't know I had this many of these. See, I'm not messing around. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You're a big Cal Ripken fan, huh, Aaron? Oh, I love Cal Ripken, man. Yeah, you're always showing off. I, I saw uh, your video today, uh, one you uploaded about a week ago. You, you're showing off your uh, autograph, Cal Ripken. Mm-hmm. The one that you pulled out of the pack. Right. Yeah, that's a great card, man. Short printed to 10, right? Oh, there we go. Tony Gwynn for the win. This is the Opeachy version. Yeah, that's that's a that's such a great card, man. The Opeachy. The got sleeper, couple, right? Got a couple of those ones, man. Nice. Great card, Aaron. Yeah, I got one Opeachy, uh, Tony Gwynn. Now uh, uh, do you remember the story on this card? Uh no, tell me, Nate. Okay, so this card here, it's a it's a upper deck redemption card. There's the um you know, it was like a, a buyback autograph that Upper Deck put in their product. Yeah. And I was on eBay one day, mm-hmm. and I was cruising through eBay, and some guy was selling a Giants collection, a whole binder full of Giants cards. And one of the pages in the binder had this card in it. And I'm like, that's a Willie Mays autograph on Card Auto. And I ended up getting the whole binder for like 20 bucks. Oh, and I God. bought it for this card right here. And there were some other really nice cards in that collection. But Wow. Yeah, it was, it was one of my uh, – you know, sometimes when you're on eBay and you're searching, you can find find stuff that's not listed very well. So. Oh, dude, that Satchel Page. Here's another. Yeah. I think this is uh, that Panini Hall of Fame. Yep, from like 2014 or whatever. Yep, it's uh, the Emerald. Nice. Emerald Parallel. I think these ones are short printed to 10, but uh, just a beautiful card, man. Very nice. Yeah, that well, I got a bunch of Josh Gibsons from that stuff. They made a lot of parallels. Check this thing out here. Oh, yeah, dude, that is sweet, man. Yeah, love that. Speaking of Babe Ruth, I've, I've never showed this one on camera. Oh, boy. Here, I better. Uh, this is one. Speaking of Leaf product, man, this is just a beautiful card. I mean, incredibly stunning. Ooh. This thing is not, I mean, it's not doing it any justice, the lighting, but all of this is like hollow rainbow foil all around this card. And this is a piece of the bat. And look how dark that bat is. Part of the bat barrel inside of here from when he played with the uh, Boston. Boston Braves or Red Sox? Red Sox. Wow. Yeah, so that's not like a piece of the bat cut from within the bat. That's like a piece of the bat from outside. Yes. Wow. So that, that bat... That part of the bat, Ruth probably had his hands on it at some point, right? Yeah. That, that's pretty. I mean, this is just a beautiful, I mean, cool, man. beautiful card, man. Damn, dude. Never shown that well, one. I mean, I got a cool Babe Ruth card, but, but 
Oh, actually, I, I do have a. Uh, I have this one here. It doesn't. I mean, it's pretty cool. I've shown this one before. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that is just a beauty. I, I love classic sweet spot, man. Yeah, this is his pants, not his jersey. Yeah. But, I mean, Upper Deck authenticated it, uh, saying that it's game-worn pants. Speaking of that. DiMaggio. That's, a, that's, your, uh, that's your, the gem that just came in, huh? Yeah, man. This is just incredible, man. Holy moly. Joe DiMaggio on card autograph. That is just it's 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 super sweet too, Nick. Because you know the ball that it's signed on in here, it has all the wrinkles on the ball um, from that leather being put in there. Wow, it's, it's, it's so cool, man! In hand. So I guess what Upper Deck did is they got a, a Joe DiMaggio autograph baseball, and then they they used that cut, yeah, uh, used that to put a, a baseball card on. Huh? Yeah. That's the tough one is what's interesting too about this is that the print run on this is shorter than than 150. If you do the research on the card, yeah. I believe that there's only actually I think 92 of these that are made. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, weird. So they yeah. uh, needed to make 150, but only made 92, or were they redemptions and only 92 are redeemed or yeah, it was weird because you do the research on it. It says uh, that there was only 92 that was actually in production. That's amazing, man. Here's a here's a 90s insert here. That's sick, man. Yeah, you got to love that die cut acetate shine. I mean, that's got three things going for it, and it's A-Rod. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Check this out. Here goes some shine, man. Look at this shine. Woo. Damn. Newly newly in, inducted Hall of Famer Edrin James. That's that that ninety nine Bowman's best. Bowman's best, man. I'm telling you, they did it right in ninety nine. Yep. Wow, man. Here's like you want to talk about old school YouTube. I bought this one off a, a, a YouTuber, probably about 10. I've been on YouTube for on earlier this month. I hit my 10 year anniversary on YouTube. And I bought this probably my first year of being on YouTube, a dual relic of uh, Reggie Jackson. But I love this card, man. Yeah. What year is this from? This is from 2000. 10. Man, these cards are like brand new when I got it. It's awesome, man. Yeah. So, we got, got some. So, what do you think of this, Aaron? What's that? Uh, uh, Wildcat 72 cardboard uh, posed a question Is Votto a possible Hall of Famer? Joey Votto. Uh, you know, the, to, to be honest, I mean, I, I, I say no, you know, I mean, but again, uh, with, with all these other guys that have got in the hall of fame recently, um, anything's possible, man. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, you know, if Votto gets in, he'll get, he's kind of reminds me of like a, uh, Harold Baines type player where he's had a really long and good career, yeah. but he's never been dominant. I, I guess right. he did win an um, MVP. Did he? I, I'm thinking he won an MVP. Yeah. So, uh, maybe that MVP gets him in the Hall of Fame. I don't know. But I'd say that anything, like you said, anything is possible. So yeah. now we all love the gold shine, right, Aaron? Yeah, absolutely. So check this one out. Oh, nice. yeah, that's a beauty, man. Oh, yeah, nice. moly. Now, this guy's going to get in the Hall of Fame. We talked about this a lot, you and I, over the phone. Right. But the fact that David Ortiz is going to get in the Hall of Fame 
is one of the reasons why I believe the writers are going to vote Barry Bonds into the Hall of Fame. Because Ortiz was on the Mitchell report. And for well, the- you know, look, we can you can go all back and forth all you want about Bonds, but look, Bond before any of this crap started, man, Bonds was a Hall of Famer before it even started. So, I mean, and you can't tell me David Ortiz is not a Hall of Famer. Yeah, this guy yeah. was he, he he was the Madison Bumgarner equivalent of a hitter in the postseason for the Red Sox. This guy yeah. was so clutch. And he, you know, his last season, he was so incredibly productive. He could have played for he could have gotten a contract, no problem. He's probably one of the top ten players in the American League his last year, at least at least offensive, like as a as a hitter. Yeah, he just he was definitely clutch, man. Yeah. I pulled this one out of a pack. That's sick, man. Yeah, you, you know me, Aaron. I don't bust too many packs, so when I have a card in my collection I actually pulled, I, I always remember it. So got some, got some gold action here. Oh yes. Jerry Rice. I used to you know, like I was telling you earlier, I'm not much of a football card guy, but that is one football card I actually bought at one point. And I had it in my collection for a while, and I ended up trading it for a Cal Ripken uh, Tops traded rookie card. But man, that's a that's such a great card of Jerry Rice. I love that card. You know what's funny about that card? And they, this same card I've had in my collection for ages. And you want to tell? I tell you where I got this card from. Is you remember when you could go in the grocery stores or like a Target, and they have the uh, rack packs hanging on those clip strips? Yep. Well, they had one of these back in the day and okay. i remember yeah and i pulled this 86 card out of there from back in the day <laughs> from what, what from your childhood yeah this is this is that old wow that man aaron that, that i love the story behind that card yeah this is that old man this is from way back when and it's it's in it's in immaculate shape man i just uh you know, I never wanted to have a grade it because, you know, it, that nostalgic part about it is, yeah, I pulled this out of a rack pack. <laughs> yep, grocery racks, baby. <laughs> so look who's in the house. Hey, George. Yes. So we're just having a good old, uh, good old box rummage, man. Good to see you in here, George. I, I actually, I just literally... I was recording a video for your con or for your uh, 500 subscriber celebration. For those of you don't, that don't know George, check his channel out. And he's doing a 500 subscriber celebration um, giveaway. And I, w- I just finished recording a video for that. And then Aaron calls me up because I had texted him earlier about going live. So here we are. But uh, yeah, grocery grocery racks for the win. So, um, what do you got? Oh, yeah. There's old Randy Moss, the 1998. Randy yeah, Moss think, rookie card. Love that yeah, card. Anybody that watches YouTube knows all the Randy Moss rookies if you watch uh, Elite Co. 3's channel. <laughs> Here's another Hall of Fame wide receiver, man. This guy was so fun to watch, man. Andre Reed. This guy was incredible. I don't know if anybody can think, you know, think back to when uh, Buffalo played the Houston Oilers, man, in a playoff game. This guy right here went nuts, man, in the last quarter, man. They were yeah. down like – I think they might have been down by 24 points, man. And Oh, I remember that game. Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah that was and, a great uh, game. Jim Kelly went nuts, and Andre Reed was part of that. <laughs> it was crazy, man. So, what's up, Clint? Cole Hamill's fan one. So, thanks for joining us here. Yeah, and uh, and uh, actually, Clint, he's been he's the guy on the '90s group, Aaron, that's been picking up all the Pat Burrell stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, I think uh, man, got getting some sweet Pat Burrell cards lately. And I think, you know, Pat Burrell, he was so awesome on, to wrap his career up 
with the San Francisco Giants, the way he did, he went out with such class, man. Yeah. And helped, the, yeah. helped propel the Giants to a world championship. I, I'm always going to love, I'm always going to be a big Pat Burrow fan. So, yeah. oh, What's look that, at man? that. Now we're getting into some vintage, baby. Let's check it out. Yeah, Jim Gilliam, Jim man. Gilliam. Is that the one? I? That's the one. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, man. That's a great card. Here's another Don Newcomb. I know you're a big Don Newcomb fan. Yeah, anytime uh -oh. I can find Don Newcomb cards, man, I, I just pick them up. I got so many Don Newcomb cards, man. Yeah. Here's another Gilliam from 57. Jim man, Gilliam. I'm telling yeah. you, man, if you, if you would have been at our dinner table, man, on Sundays, Boy, you would have heard all about uh, uh, Jim Gilliam. You would have heard so much about Jim Gilliam. Yeah. Here's a here's a Wilson Contreras uh, rookie card out of Heritage. I remember when this card, Nate. Remember when this card? This card was super hot, man. Oh yeah. That's the parallel. Yeah, that's that short print, right? Yeah. Yeah. Corey Seager, he's 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 had a decent career, but that just shows you like the um, the attention span of of uh, of the of the hobby at times. It's it's kind of baffling to me. Here's one yeah. that you'll, you'll appreciate, Aaron. Oh yeah, that's my Absolutely. only Sheffield auto. I know you got one in your collection, but yeah, I, I got. got you know, there's a parallel too to that one where he's in a Dodger uniform. Oh, uh, do you have it? Yeah, I have it. Nice. Yeah, I always like I always get a kick out of Sheffield's autograph because it to me it looks like he's writing backwards. But anyway, yeah, that's a great one. Is, is oh, that uh, Jason Kidd? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I remember when he was in high school because he grew up in my local area. And I've told you this story, I believe. Used to, uh, you know, he'd, he'd show up at the park sometimes to play pickup basketball. You know, I used to go – when I was a kid, I used to hop on my bike. Mm -hmm. I lived in El Cerrito. Yeah. And sometimes I, I would I – would, I'd be in Richmond, El Cerrito, Albany, Berkeley. I would ride as far as it took to play to play basketball, you know, like like a pickup street basketball, you know, at the playground. Right. But uh, there we go. And and if I went over to like a Berkeley and Albany area, a lot of times he would he would be out there playing, and everybody knew who he was. And then of course after after his sophomore year of high school, you you wouldn't see him out there anymore. But there's the Sheffield bat, a couple of bat pieces. Oh, nice one. This one, you know all about that one, Nate. Eh? Oh That's yeah. The legacies. That's the rule yeah. too. Yeah, those things are beautiful. Those are the number to a hundred. That's a, that's kind of like a staple in the nineties collecting. You know, you want to hear something funny about uh, you just got you that one. Something? I I just picked it up yesterday. I'll show you my copy. It's really bad, but you know what? I found it in a bargain box and I don't have a Gary Carter rookie. Yeah. And I mean I just like baseball cards. They don't have to be mint for me to like them. And Ooh, uh, look at the shine on that thing, man. Yeah, this card. I found this at uh, Bill's Coins in Petaluma. Wow. And I think he gave it to me for like a dollar. Wow. And it's number man. two, uh, 74 or 100. Sometimes you can find find some bargains out there still, you know, if you, if you shop enough. Yeah. So we got, we got, uh, we got, we got the third member of our crew on the show right now so <laughs> i'm sure uh xavier's at work but but he can't help but watch you and i show off cards aaron brother xavier what's up man <laughs> damn dude that steve garvey now did i tell you you know i should bust out i should go grab an old beckett from like 1990 if you go to 1971 tops in a Beckett from like 1990, the Garvey rookie card is the most valuable card in the entire set. 
Now right. that, that boy has the hobby changed. I yeah, well, I, I remember, I man. I remember back in the day when this car was just super hot, man. Ask me what I paid for this today. I I I bought this car maybe you know, maybe six years ago or so. And uh I paid probably seven dollars for that. What? Yep. See, I need to pick up a Garvey rookie. If I if I could find one for seven bucks, that that'd be a no brainer. I mean, and it's in primo shape, man. Yeah, that's a beautiful card. Check this one out. Uh, I bought this one off a YouTuber a long time ago. I don't even remember who I bought it from, but I remember he was a YouTuber selling cards. Oh, yeah, that's just fantastic, man. But we got a, uh, a beautiful Mike Schmidt. And, you know, you know, now this card here embodies 1980s Philadelphia Phillies baseball because it's got that powder blue. Yes. The powder blue from the 80s. Not everybody likes the powder blue. I yeah. personally love powder blue uniforms. Mm -hmm. And that that's just so 80s. That, that's just like Mike Schmidt in a nutshell right there. I remember, Aaron, you had laid this one on me and you told me what you paid for it. I was like, yeah, yeah. You, know how to, you know how to find them bargains. That's just such a sweet card, man. Yeah, I love this card, man. So, so here we go. So, what do you like? Uh, what, what do you think of George's thoughts on uh, Steve Garvey here? Uh, so, Steve Garvey should be in the hall. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember when I was a kid in like eighty three, eighty four, eighty five. When I was a um, a young card collector, I remember. When I whenever I got a Steve Garvey card out of a pack of cards, that was going in my pile of the best of the best. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the Garvey cards went in my best of the best pile. He was so right back then. You see, he says, "Check this one out, Nate. I got a couple of copies of this one." Oh man, yeah, you like those uh, fifty? Oh man, I love I love those fifty-five Bowman Color TV uh, cards. Yeah. 55 banks yeah i got i got the willie mays from that set so as you guys as you know one of the guys i'm really um yeah so ray from philly says schmidt i know he's a big schmidt fan of course that's his what favorite player yeah. but man i'm trying to um i've been working on my pool holes pc and you know, like Eric, those back pages on his videos, he says, collect what you like, you know. And I've been picking up a lot of pool holes refractors, and I've noticed refractors are making a huge comeback in the hobby. Yeah. And I've, I've been thinking about it, like why – here's the question, Aaron, and I have my theory. You share your I'm, thoughts. Why are refractors so too. popular now? Uh, say that again, Nate. Why do you think refractors are making such a comeback in the hobby right now? I have my theory. I mean, I think that's a great question to to uh, to ask, man. I mean, oh, hold on, Nate. Hold on. Man, Albert Pujols is just – got to love Albert Pujols cards. Oh, man. There's a green refractor there. Yeah, refractors have gotten quite popular, man, uh, over the years, man. I mean, you know, it all start goes back to, you know, 90s when 93, when refractors hit the market, man. I think, you know, people are starting to see, you know, just how beautiful they are. But, uh, you know, a lot of it, Nate, you know, these, these, like your group, um, you know, other groups that are out there, man, are, are showing all these different refractors. And uh, I, I think uh, part of the reason is, is, you know, because of that, they're getting a lot more attention. And plus they were rare. They were tough to pull, especially if you go into the 90s. I mean, a lot of the 90 refractors were just tough pulls. 
I mean, yeah, I, have you ever watched like a, a 90s uh, Topps Chrome break or Bowman Chrome break? Yeah. Uh, so if, if for people that are watching that have never seen like a, a retro break, you know, from the 90s, what they would do, what Topps would do is they would – you would have 24 packs in a box and to get a, um, a parallel refractor. And what I mean by parallel is parallel to the base set. It was either one or two refractors per box, depending on the products. Usually it was two. And so just think you open 24 packs, you get two parallel refractors. And if the set had, let's say 300 cards in the set, you would have to open 150 boxes to get right. that one player. Yeah. So they were really, really tough to pull back in the day. Here's some more pull holes refractors. Ooh, Monty Irvin. There's, and, there's my guys, Monty Irvin and Don Newcomb. Yep. Damn, that's beautiful, Aaron. Here, let's uh, let's highlight that card for you here. Beautiful. I can't get the lighting right in there, but man, it's such a gorgeous car, man. You know, you know, we we ought to go into business and try to figure out like how to how to uh, give the perfect lighting. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Is that another? Uh, Mi yeah, mule, mule subtles. Balls? Damn, dude, you are just you're you're on a mule subtles uh, kick here. That's that's beautiful. Here's the great Elston Howard, man. Yeah, another guy, man. Yeah, he was a, a first uh, player for the Yankees from the Negro Leagues. Yeah. We were talking about him yesterday. Yeah, I love Elston Howard, man. I got a couple yeah. of things. I don't think I've ever shown this one. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. I don't know. But check this one out, Nate. Oh, that's – I love – man, here, let me uh, – wow. Is that a wool jersey swatch in there? Yeah. Wow. Such beautiful, a beautiful card. I mean, beautiful card. Wow. So, uh, uh, a legendary YouTuber, New York Yankees fan seven. Any investment tips being dueled out in this live stream? Probably not. <laughs> but, but here's, here's the best way I could answer that question. The way that the hobby is going right now. You can't go wrong. It doesn't yeah. matter what you buy. You're going to you're going to come out a winner. So that so 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 my my if if you're looking for investment tips and I, and New York Yankees fan 7, I know you know all this. You you are definitely you have a fantastic taste for cards and you know you know what you're doing. So you th there's no way I could give you in, any investment tips that you you don't already know. But um, but just collect what you love if you're a collector. And here we go. Um, we got Bill is in the house. What's up, brother Bill? The Hall of Fame collector. And we got Crazy Kev is in here as well. But, oh, man, here's, here's a card I picked up. I bet you I got this card, and this is a few years ago before refractors started to pick up steam. But this card, I had to get this card because I got a thing for minis. I love minis. And this is from Bowman Chrome, and I love that blue wave refractor. It's a mini. It's a die cut. It's a refractor. It's blue wave. It's Albert Pujols. And... It's numbered. So love this card right here. Man, that's a beautiful card. That Stuff like that. Card. Fun to collect. More, uh, yeah. Football vintage. Okay, here we go. Some football. Let's show off that football, Aaron. This is uh, Raymond Berry. I got, a, I got a couple of copies of this, too. This is an extra one that I had, or we had like three of them. Now, who's Raymond Berry? I don't know who he is. That was Johnny Unitas's uh, main target, you know, back in the fifties. Okay. It's another Hall of Fame, another Hall of Fame wide receiver. 
you want to talk about somebody with great hands, man. Here's a guy that had, you know, awesome, awesome hands, man. A, a great route runner, too. So, Bill, Bill, the Hall of Fame collector, is giving some advice. And thanks for sharing about, um, about him, Aaron. But he says, now is the time to be getting pool hole some Miggy stuff. They're tanking right now, but the future for Hall of Fame for sure. And you know what? I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about that because that's the, the interesting thing about this hobby is when you got new people coming into the hobby, they want the, the, the hot new rookies, right? The prospects of new guys, the, the guys that haven't played, the guys that haven't proven themselves. Yeah. And then the guys that are wrapping up their careers like Pujols and Miguel Cabrera and all, all these other players, they get kind of lost. Like no one thinks about them, right? And then probably – I would say about five, about about three years after they retire, cards like this are going to pick up steam. I remember Jeter was kind of in a low for a while there, if you could believe that. Jeter stuff just wasn't selling for that much, and um, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're you know about a year or two before they hit the Hall of Fame, this stuff is just going to, you know, it's going to get real. It's going to be hot in the market again. So, yeah. and then. Um, then Ichiro too. That's a that's a good call. Ichiro. Yeah. Now's a good time to pick his stuff up. So, and I think especially, you're seeing bonds right uh, now. Yep. I so mean, holes I, holes is, Bill is took crazy. the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. You're seeing it with bonds right now heating up. But yeah, pool holes, man. I got here's a here's the autograph. I got it, oh, man. Man, that came out so good. I watched him sign this card right in front of me. And it was funny. The Giants were playing the Angels last night, and Pujols came to bat, and I was talking about Albert Pujols with my wife. And then he hit a double, knocked in two runs right after that for the, wow. uh, for the Anaheim Angels. And we were watching Pujols and Mike Trout. It was fun, man. My wife and I were really enjoying baseball this year. Nate, here, here's a guy that's sucking wind right now. <laughs> oh, um, is that – Otani? Otani, yeah. Well, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with Otani's career. It's There's a lot of lot of hype for him, but, yeah, you know, it's I, I think it's it, it just goes to show you it's – Really difficult to be a great pitcher and a great hitter. I mean, right? It's I just it's I, he's gonna have to decide what he wants to do. This yeah, is probably Griffey's good. first chase card ever. The uh, ninety-three Donruss or no ninety ninety-one? Excuse me, Donruss Elite. But. Uh, I traded a Griffey uh, upper deck rookie for this card about five years ago or so. That's fantastic, man. So we got crazy. Kev says I'd take any future hall of famer over any unproven rookie. And I bet you the majority of collectors that have been collecting for what do you think, Aaron? Fifteen years or more? Yeah, would, would take that route. Like any experienced collector or someone that's been around for a while would rather have a proven Hall of Famer. Oh, here's another elite card. So we got Mike, baseball collector here. So what's up, Mike? But there's another uh, Don Russ elite. Yeah, here's a. Uh... I think I might have shown this one, Nate. Oh, let's check it out, man. Here. Here's that. Oh, dude, that laundry tag patch. Laundry tag. Beautiful. That's a pretty sweet card, man. That is indeed. Indeed, that is a sweet card. Yeah, David Ortiz, man. He's now here here's a player here that I love collecting 
that uh, I don't think he gets much love in the hobby. But uh, Sammy Sosa. Yeah. So if if you if you if you have a lo like if you don't have a big budget and you want to collect one of the guys from the 500 home run club and somebody that helps save baseball, and I, then uh, I would say collect Sammy Sosa. Remember what was it? June of 2000, or I mean 1998. What do you have? Like 20, 22 home runs or something like that. Yeah, he was man. He was fantastic, man. Hey, you know, Aaron. Now before we went live, I was playing around with my lighting forever, but I, actually, you can, can kind of see the shine pretty good. Yeah. 98 Topps Chrome Refractor. One of my favorite sets, 96 Topps Chrome Refractor, Topps Chrome Refractors. Yeah. So. So here we go. Oh, okay. So, um, who... So, yeah, we got people talking about uh, Dominguez and, yeah, neither stepped up on the field yet. So, it's it's hard to say, man, What's where, where are these young players. But, Aaron, what do you think? If you got 20 hot prospects, how many of them are, are going to turn out to be superstars? I'm not talking about Hall of Famers. I'm talking about, you know, have their, their, their time in the, uh, in the limelight. Yeah. The 20 big prospects. So, percentage is so low. <laughs> Yeah, I'm th I'm thinking maybe one in twenty. I've yeah. talked about that before. Yeah, and that my favorite set right there, ninety eight finest. One of my favorite sets. So another football Hall of Famer. Here's Lynn Swan, part of that great Steeler team. Wow. Hall of Fame wide receiver, man. That's just a great card. Is he the now? I is he the guy that made that one-handed catch on the sideline? Yeah, a lot of a lot of times you'll see. Sometimes when they highlight some of the great plays and of, of uh, you know during that era, you'll see you know uh, Lynn Swan with Franco Harris making those tip catches and running it into the end zone. But that's uh, Lynn Swan was a remarkable receiver. Yeah, he was. He's a part of that. Uh, I guess he was uh, Bradshaw's fa favorite target. Yeah, this card, this card never gets old, man. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, man, that is just such a beautiful image of Jackie Robinson, man. Probably one of his best cards, man. If you ask me. It is a great looking card. I love how you put it in that that uh, that is that a uh, pro mold to screw down or? Yeah, one of those uh, deluxe. Yeah, is are those recessed? Yeah, they are. And you put it in a Bowman insert, right? Right. Cool. Yeah, that looks great in there, like that. Looks like a museum piece in that. There was another guy that was fun to watch, man. You remember, you remember uh, Nate Adam Dunn? Oh yeah, man. He was a, he was a slugger. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was fun to watch. Let's see. Uh, I think is that his rookie? I think I got one of those in my collection. Yeah, that was his rookie. Yeah, that's a great card. So uh, I think uh, George is on the same page with you, Aaron, about the uh, the fifty Bowman uh, Jackie Robinson. Right. So. Yeah, I know George is a big uh, Jackie fan too. Oh yeah, he's he's been picking up some unbelievable Jackie Robinson cards lately. I never. Sh let me show this one, Nate. Yo. Here, let me get a close-up of that one. 
Yeah, you showed that one. Uh, you got a couple of Hall of Famers on that one there. You got you got Ray Dandridge here and Larry Doby here. That's just fantastic, man. That is a great uh, dual cut auto. Both Negro League players and MLB Hall of Famers, man. On one card is that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, you don't see and. Man, yeah, I've I've always enjoyed collecting pool holes. That's why I keep showing off some of my pool holes cards here. I don't. I, maybe I ought to grab a bonds box here in a minute. Need that shine, Nate. Oh yeah. You Gary Sheffield. Bowman, Bowman's best man. Those, you know, this these cards were just beautiful. Even the base cards. And you know that's I think that's two thousand Bowman's best. That that is the base card. The whole set yeah, looked like it that. is the base card. Yeah, yeah, that's that beautiful, man. Here was the the impact player insert. Yep, I got that card. I remember when I got that card, I asked you if you had it. And you said no, and I was like, oh, good, I get to keep it then. <laughs> This oh, was man. a national Holy. pickup right here, 2017 national. Oh, yeah, the gold refractor, Bowman Chrome. Man, that's a staple in the hobby right there, those Bowman Chrome gold refractors. Damn, beautiful, Aaron. Gold, baby. Is that one numbered to 170? Yeah, this one's 170. Yeah, they had some weird numbering back in the day. And who's on the other side of that one? Uh, That's Travis that Eric matchup. Oh, okay. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. The, the, what's cool about that card? Uh, uh, the, there's a Bonds McGuire one of that one. Ah, uh, yeah. Showing off your your Gary Sheffield shine. Woo. Wow. Yeah. Those uh, Atomics are beautiful. Yeah. These were just, this was just such a beautiful product, man. Uh, up oh, UD down. Black? Yeah. Yeah. There's like a couple of different parallels in there. One number to like, yeah, those old um, Donruss Preferred. Or no, that's a Leaf Refractoral. Ah, oh, man. You got to get the Blackboard or Refractor of that one. I know. Oh, yeah. Those look great with the black top loaders. Beautiful. Man, love those old heritage uh, refractors. Oh, look at there. Bonds. <laughs> oh, you picked one up, huh? The Fan Fest. Yep. The Pinnacle Fan Fest. 94 Bowman's Best, man. Yeah, that's a great one right there. Check this one out. I got it. Um, this card, I found it my LCS numbered to 10. I, I think I paid like 10 bucks for it. Nice. You know, you know what's ironic about a card like this is if it didn't have the jersey relic and it was numbered to 10, it would be worth a lot more than one that has a jersey relic numbered to 10, right? Yeah. It's weird how that works sometimes in the hobby. But it's true. I mean, it, it happens all the time. This is an old Hank Aaron, man. Yeah, what year is that from? Is that 74? Is that 73 or 74? Is that when he broke the uh, National League uh, home run record? Uh, 76, I think it is. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go grab some Bonds cards. I'll Harry back. Simpson, another Negro League player, got some Quato action. Nice. Purple. There's a black. Got some Jake Peavy action. Oh. Man, I'm just rumbling now. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll let you. I'll let you show off for a minute. I'll be right back. Yeah. 
these ones were tough to pull right here, the Platinum Series. All right. Nate, I'm just going down the line, man, showing refractors. Oh, yeah. Man, I love those uh, mirror image. Uh, and then, you know, they got an inverted version of that card. <laughs> so, Sean, speaking of man, Adam Dunn, Sean. here we go. Dunn stats for 2012, 204 average, 40. One homers and 222 strikeouts. <laughs> now, uh, I remember uh, Eric told me one time that, uh, oh, what's his name? Dave Kingman is the only player in baseball history to hit 40 homers in a season and have a negative war. <laughs> So here we go. Here's some uh, some random inserts of Barry Bonds. Oh, nice. I love this crown. These are all upper deck, by the way. I'm going to show off some upper deck cards. That's an old school one right there, man. These these are tough to find. That Bonds there from 92 upper deck. Oh, you know these, right? The um, oh, what is it? electric diamond, electric gold diamond. Oh, yeah. For all you 90s uh, collectors, you'll know what these are. That's a reverse negative of... The, of uh, that's a reverse negative of that Bonds card there. I just picked that one up not too long ago. Oh, man. So what else you got, Aaron? Mm -hmm. No. Oh. Here's some more of these uh, crowns. Oh, those cards are sweet. Do you have that whole rainbow? Yep. You got the proof to 50? That's the one I don't have. I don't have yeah. that one. Those things are tough, man. Remember, Ben gave me this one last year at the National. He had, he had this in some random doubles box of his. From collector's choice. Those are a tough pull. Remember, remember these, these uh now these ones here, people might look at them and say, Well, what's so special about this card? But this was the um upper deck choice gold signature. These are one per box. You got one of these per box. And, and these boxes from back in the day, they were like 36 packs per box and like 10, 10 cards per pack, maybe 15 cards per pack. And you only get one gold per box. Is that a uh, hit it over the fence pence uh, uh, refractor? Hit it over the fence pence. Yep. He's still playing, man. He's... Uh, is that a Francisco Lindor rookie? Yeah. yeah. I got I got most of the Nate, bonds. I, you remember when I pulled this, Nate? Oh, you know what? We were watching the World Series. That was um, – Yeah. And we were in the hotel room. I pulled and that we had one. And that box. And I pulled, th I pulled this one too. Yes. You yeah, got both, both of them. Ah, that's awesome, man. Look, man, Barry Bonds, I don't know what it was about Collector's Choice, but they love to get Bonds uh, signing autographs on, you know, pictures of him signing autos. What's that one there? Here, let me... Uh... Hoskins, Reese Hoskins. Oh, Reese Hoskins, okay. Man, I got... Mm -hmm. Nice. You had that uh, pink refractor one, remember? Yeah. Uh, did you trade that or something? Yeah, I get. I let it go to the uh, the card shop guy. Yeah, that's right. You traded it for uh, one of the football cards or something, right? 
Yep. Yeah, that Kershaw. I have so many of these guys, man. Syndergaard. Oh, yeah. Now, you busted a lot of that uh, old uh, top uh, Topps Heritage, I guess, right? Bust, there's a Buster Posey. Damn, I forgot how many upper deck exclusives I have. I don't even know where I got these cards, but they're numbered to 100. Oh, man, is that um, Mini Minoso? Yeah, a 56. You think he'll ever get in the Hall of Fame, Aaron? I don't know, man. It's If he does, I don't know if we'll see it in our lifetime. <laughs> yeah, some, I, I, I cannot figure out why he's not a Hall of Famer. Uh, it's a crime, man, but. I, I, mean, I don't know. I think some some players, for whatever reason, they're just never going to get – they're not going to get in. And then other guys get in, and you're like, how'd they get in? So who knows about that damn Hall of Fame? You know, I pulled that card with you too, Nate. Oh, the Stanton? That's cool, man. Didn't you get the Muncie as well? Yeah, I got the Muncie. I got, you got the gold the Muncie, was, right? This is the one I was looking for. And I actually pulled it. Oh, yeah, Kenley Jansen. That, that was the, the, when the Dodgers were playing the Red Sox that year. Yeah. Jansen was a dominant closer in, yeah. what, 2018, I guess it was? Yeah. He was unbelievable. And then I think what is asthma kicked in and the following year, he was having problems after that. Well, wasn't he drafted as a catcher? Oh, David Price, huh? Is that the uh, Walmart exclusive? Yep. That's a cool card. You pull that one? Yeah, I pulled that one. Nice. So, right. Gowdy heads up, uh, Tim Lincecum? Yep. That's cool, man. This card needs to go on a magnetic. It does not look good. Yeah, I got to put this thing in a magnetic, man. It does not look good in a top loader. That's a cool card, man. Yeah. Here's a Glaber Torres. How's he doing this year? I'll tell you the truth. I don't know, man. I haven't been Maybe, really maybe this guy can answer that for us. <laughs> Bronx Bomber, New York. And if I recall, Bronx Bomber, you're a, you're a uh, Bonds uh, fan too, right? There's another Some Victor Robles. Yeah, that's uh, that's um, one of uh, Snoop's favorite uh, players there on the National. Yeah, I got to send those to him. Here's another nice. one. Yeah, he likes Victor Robles. He, we we talk about him all the time when we're we're on the phone with Snoop. Man, I just scratch the surface. Man, I guess I've picked up a lot of upper deck uh, inserts. Now I'm starting to. It's a Roy Holiday. Ooh, that guy. He was so dominant, man. I mean, when he was like what about three or four years span, that guy was so much fun to watch, and I really enjoyed watching the Giants beat him in the playoffs. Carlos Correa. That's the triple on the Star Quest. For all you guys that collect 90s that end up watching this. This is the holographics launchers. This is the uh the gold. These these things are tough, Aaron. Check that card out. Look at that shine. That's beautiful. Is that the Muncie? Yeah. I remember you got the the regular and the gold out of that box, right? Yeah, here's the gold. Man, that was that was such a fantastic pull. What are the odds? I mean, he, and hey, let's check it out. Yeah, here's the gold. Yeah, that card is fantastic. Who's he paired up with on that card? I can't remember. Uh, Tyler uh, Landoff. Okay, so so Muncie's the guy that he's the name on that card then, because I never even heard of the Tyler cat. 
I pulled the gold Byron Buxton too. Very nice. Yeah. So I don't know, man. There's so many cards in this box, man. Shohei Otani. I think we both picked one of those up at the same time from your local card shop, remember? Yep. That's a great card. I love the heritage. Cunha. Yeah, that's – did you pack pull that one? This one I pull. Remember that one? Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, that was nice, man, at the card shop. Yeah, that, that that was at the rummage the rummage card shop at the ga, uh, the gas lamp district of San Diego. <laughs> hey, if you can't have the quantum leap, you gotta you gotta go with the unparalleled. Yeah. Well, boy, I can't find wait to find the quantum leap version of that card. Diamond Destiny. Yeah, buddy. Oh, you were showing off a of Sheffield earlier. One of the black diamonds. Yeah. Oh, Kobe. Is that his rookie? Yep. Yeah. Oh man, Tiger Woods. I mean, you got everybody in there. All the all the uh, Hall of Famers. How about this one, Nate? <laughs> is that is that? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Here, let me let me. Oh man, Lance Armstrong. <laughs> What a story, huh? Oh, man. Incredible story. Oh, man. The gold Madison Bumgarner. Oh, that's a nice one. Remember this one, Nate? Yep. Jeter. Yep. Yeah, I got, I got a copy of that card. Josh Donaldson. Man, the warp zone. Somebody listed one of these on eBay for like $250. Buy it now. Really? <laughs> Which is ridiculous. It's not a $250 card, but it's a hell of a nice card. Man, these these cards were so cool. You remember these inserts, man? The um, The ballparks from... Summit. Yeah, let's, oh yeah, yeah. That one's numbered to what about um about five thousand or something? I I know it's numbered, but I can't remember what it's yeah, numbered. Eight thousand. Eight thousand. Yeah, some weird numbering. Here, this one was a cool pool, man. Oh yeah, those are those are beautiful cards. I got the A rod from that set. Yeah. Yep. Finest moment. Is that uh, Chipper? Yep. Nice. You know, hey, you want to know something about that card right there? Is that one's numbered to 3,000, I think, right? Yep. Now, the first 300 cards are die cut from that set. Yeah. So if you could ever find a die cut one, it'll say it's numbered to 3,000, but really only the first 300 are die cut. Yeah, that's beautiful right there. I missed out on the gold one. Oh. So mad about that. This is a beautiful card, man. Oh, yeah, those, uh, uh, what is it, Ninth Degree or whatever it's called? Yeah. This is the Reciprocal Techno, number to 100 of Bonds. Oh, how about these? You, you. The um, man, these cards are beautiful. I got both of them. Oh yeah, that's just fantastic. Yeah, well, let me check your card out, then I'll show mine off. Oh yeah, that's like a foil shine right there. That's the Billy Wagner rookie from SP. That's an incredible card. Whoops. So these cards here. Super tough to find, and it's all foil, man. Just beautiful. I wish the light would do him justice. Uh, that'll kind of do him justice. 
But I'm glad to have both of them now in my collection. Here we go, Nate. See if I can kind of highlight that set. Let's see if I can highlight this set. Oh. Nice. These are the... Uh, Allen and Ginter, right? The Hawaiian. Oh, the Hawaii. How do you get a hold of it? Did you buy that as a set? Yeah, this one I'm, I got... I got the complete set, um, the the Ichiro and Bonds is in a different holder. But uh, here's the A rod. Oh well, actually, <laughs> here's the A rod. And then there's I'm the. Uh, the print. Say that again, Nate. Is that who? How many of those did they print? I, you know, to be honest, I knew at one point, I forget, um, I knew it was a super, super short print. And you could only get them at the Hawaii Trade Conference. Yeah. Uh, but there's the pool holes. Beautiful. That's so cool you got the whole set. I remember you offered the bonds to me, but I had already, I already had it. The Gibson. Yeah, the Gibson, man. That card is incredible. Damn, man. That thing makes – that card I'm, – I'm starting to drool over here looking at all those uh, Hawaii Trade Conference Ginters. Oh, man. Just keep it moving, man. Here's a Andrew Jones. Yeah, I thought he was going to be a Hall of Famer until he got, he got popped for PEDs and – I had a bad year all at the same time. I'll show some more Bonds Upper Decks while you're showing off your Jimmy Rollins, future Hall of Famer rookie card, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Love all these die cuts that Upper Deck did. Remember, I pulled all of these. Too bad what, what's going on with this guy. Let me see. who Who is that? Oh, Addison Russell. Didn't he get in some kind of trouble with uh... – so we got Amish Dave in here. What's up, Amish Dave Archer? What's up, Brother Dave? Oh, man, nice one. Is that a – Gwiggity Gwen. Yeah. Some more die cut action here. From all that 90s die cut action. Oh, man, one of these popped up. The um, the version to 100 popped up the other day on eBay. And I think it was only up for about five minutes because the seller listed it at like 65 bucks. Buy it now. And, boy, I wish I would have seen it first because I would have bought it. But the view to a thrill die cut, this is the, uh, the number one number to 2,000. But the one number to a hundred popped up, man. I was bummed out. I didn't, couldn't get it. Ooh, Chris Bryant. Did you pull that one? I did. You know, nice. It's interesting. I busted a box. Got the Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant. Wow. So Popsy Green. 1960. There he is, Dan Bankhead. I don't know anything about Dan Bankhead, so that's that's the first black pitcher to make to, to uh throw a pitch in MLB. Wow. And um, what year was that? I, I, I just don't – I'm not – This is his from card from – this is his uh, only card from 1951. From 51? Oh, okay. Uh, you know what? I think – This you, guy you, right here, what was amazing is – so this guy comes out and pitches and, and, and pitches as the first, uh, you know, black pitcher, right? Then he turns around and hits a home run in the same game. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember you doing a video about that now that I, now that I remember, but 
tragic, tragic story too with them. You remember the uh, Eureka stamps? Let's check it out. This one's from 1948. Eureka. Now, is that a uh, is that made by Tops? I, I don't. No, I feel no. I no, feel like Tops just, made uh, some kind of the, stamp the before their uh, baseball card. They put out that that it was like a little set that uh, Eureka put out. You know that looks had, so good in the, all the it had all the Dodger players um that were part of the team that year. There's a Jackie Jack. one. Wow, that's cool, man. Here's the and, Roy Campanella. That's a beautiful image right there, man. That's a uh old Ebbets Field, I guess, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful images. You know, those, those look so nice in those um, Bowman inserts, too. Yeah, there you go. Kershaw. Uh, oh. Is it, wait, the, is that the Allen and Ginter back? Yeah, that's the Ginter back. Yeah, that's a nice card, man. More die cut. Man, Upper Deck made a lot of die cut inserts back in the day. Chapman. <laughs> now what? Now that would be a hey, that would be a fun at bat. Bonds versus Chapman. Oh yeah. <laughs> Who do you think would win in that battle? Oh shit. I'll tell you right now, it would be Barry Bonds. Yeah. Because. <laughs> oh yeah, the the only baseball card featuring a home run, not a player the forte man i missed out on the red the, the red version of this card numbered to 100 about three years ago and i still am paying for it because i've never been able to get one there you go mad bomb uh heritage rookie love this card man yep timmy check that one out national pride yeah, that one's fantastic. Yeah, I guess whatever country you're from, right, they put like a uh, die cut the card and then they got like a, a, a gold foil stamp of the country with the flag in the background. Yeah. Check this one out, man. Like, I love old, this is what I love about 90s cards. You got like a wood panel like this is, it's printed on wood, but then there's an acetate panel right in the middle of it. Our card is so cool. Yeah. This was a cool card too, man. Oh yeah, the uh, SP uh, Ramirez. This is stuff I used to keep in my binder. And then one day I'm like, I gotta get this out of my binder. Yeah. Number to 250 from back in the day. I remember when this card was was going nuts, man, for this card. Oh, the man, Bo Jackson. I think he's going to be popular from forever now. He's kind of like the Jim Thorpe, you know, of his generation, you know. Wow, wow that's it. Like the the fun thing about Bo Jackson is you can collect them in two different sports. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think he was a better football player than baseball player, but he would have developed into a hell of a baseball player if he would have stuck around. Oh yeah, yeah. I need to get uh, this is a victory to a hundred. Oh wait, let, let me just check that one out, Aaron. Willie Mays, huh? 1979 Hall of Famer for the win. Hey, hey, kid. Yeah. Man, that guy, Willie Mays. Is that Fergie and? Seaver. Seaver. 3,000. 3,000 strikeout. Right really, man. All 
Nice one, Aaron. Now, what's this one number two? This one's numbered to 50. These are cool cards. Yeah, that is a sweet card, man. Yeah, I didn't realize. I, I mean, like, Upper Deck was a company. I didn't have a whole lot of Bonds inserts, but now I'm starting to realize I, I got quite a few. So my collection has gotten a lot better in the Upper Deck brand. This card's sweet. So who's on there, Aaron? Uh, let me, let me, I can't tell unless I uh, do this. This one has uh, Vita Blue and Dennis Martinez. Ooh. Yeah. Now, it blows my mind that Vita Blue, you know, for a long time, I assumed he was a Hall of Famer. I, I, I didn't know he wasn't. A, when I found out he wasn't a Hall of Famer, I had to do a double take. Yeah, you and me. <laughs> I mean, that yeah, guy won an MVP and a Cy Young. Yeah. And – a multiple World Series champion, and he's not a Hall of Famer. Hey, don't get me started on that one, man. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I know he got in trouble, and maybe that's why he's not a Hall of Famer. But that—that's not—that's that's not a good enough reason for me. Because who doesn't get in trouble? I got in trouble. I'm a YouTube Hall of Famer. Damn it! No. <laughs> Wow, here, wait, let me see your card. Beautiful. Oh, man. The Bob Lemon rookie card. You, you, you want to talk about, <laughs> you got some shine and some vintage rookage. <laughs> Oh man, so uh, Four Leaf card says he thought you, he must have been like how I was. He just assumed Vita Blue was in the Hall of Fame. I I always assumed he was until, I mean, I found out a while ago he's not a Hall of Famer. But oh, uh, this card right here, one of these. There's a die cut version of this card that I've never been able to. I've never even seen available for sale. Oh man, that is nice. This card's nice, but the die cut. So, so I know Vita Blue, he's pretty good with the fans, you know. There's the, uh, it's got the stamp on it. Yeah, that the was big, nice. Big show. Yeah. <sighs> so much fun, Aaron, showing off all those cards you've never, you've never shown before. Here we go. Check All right, let's check out, it out. Right? Oh, yeah. Orlando Cepeda. I don't think I've ever shown those. Uh, yeah, I don't remember seeing that one. You got a lot of tribute. You're a big fan of the tribute, aren't you, Aaron? Yeah, I like the older tribute. Like from 02, that's like what, probably 2003 or 04 or somewhere in yeah, there, right? I like, oh, I like 01 through 04. Check out this old SBX, Barry Bonds. Wow, that's, here, I got to I gotta do a close-up on that one for you. Fergie, you're a big Fergie collector. Oh, man, that's my guy right there, man. Yeah, you got a lot of, you got a lot of Fergie Jen Jenkins cards in your collection. I noticed that. What do we got there, Aaron? Bucky Harris. A Hall of Famer relic. Nice. Here's a Lou Brock. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this so we can both show our cards off at the same time and get a, more of a close-up. Oh, yeah, that's awesome, man. We got Juan Mirashaw. Boy, look at that. Look at that pitch down at the bottom there. Wow. <laughs> I hate to be batting right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. 
Old upper deck band. I'm talking about somebody who's underrated in the hobby, man. Oh, my goodness. Duke Snyder. He is a heck of a ball player, man. I'm yeah. sure Ron Fig can appreciate him. He's uh he's hanging out with us right now, Aaron. Cool. You know, yeah, what's up, guy, brother Ron? Man. Look at this one right here, Nate. Check this one out. Look at the dirt on that. The dirt on this uh is that Jim Palmer? Yep. Yeah, you, you gotta love those dirty uh relic cards. Yep. I got a few Bonds relics where, where there's a little game used dirt on them. You got, remember this one, Aaron? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We were to get, we were well, in San Diego. I was in I San Diego the you when I got that one. Yep. I knew you'd remember like, that. I think one. that's the variation. <laughs> it is, yeah. Here's the regular one. It's hard to tell, but. I, the one on the bottom has is like the black and white, and then the, the one I picked up is is the blue tint variation. Yeah. These aren't numbered, but there's only a hundred of them, and I I, get, I I was able to identify it. These cards are so beautiful. Yeah, those old tributes. Mel Ott. Yep. Yeah, Mel Ott. Here's a Stan Musial. Stan the man. Here's upper the deck retro. Things. Have you ever watch a retro break? Upper deck retro break. These are the ones that came in the lunch boxes. Yeah, those are cool, man. Yeah, there's a let's play two, right? Mm-hmm. Man, this card's cool. Roger Hornsby. Nice one. Here's the Jackie. Yep. Beautiful card, Aaron. Campanella. Do you are you collecting that whole set? I have the whole. Well, I, I'm missing two. I don't have the yeah. shoeless Jackson. Oh man, yeah. I bet you I that just one. I haven't seen it pop up. Here's the Reggie. There's another retro. These are those lunchbox. You know, these are the cards that came out of the lunchbox. Big boppers. This is a great card right here, man. I love this card. Yeah, that's sweet, man. It took me, like, this card is like one of those cards where the print run doesn't really dictate how tough they are to find. It took me, like, 20 years to to track this card down, it's numbered to 500. You just never see it pop up. Joe Morgan. Ah, yes, Morgan. Now, the ironic thing about Morgan is he, 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 he don't want Bonds to get in the Hall of Fame. There you go, uh, Dawson. Yeah, Hawk. Oh. The Hawk. Ripken. So you, you're missing the shoeless Joe Jackson and uh, who else? And uh, I think, uh, I don't know. I got to check my list. I'm only missing two, though. How much? Uh, yeah, you don't see too many shoeless Joe Jackson cards out there. I was number to 25. Is that Fisk? Ooh, yeah. I might have that maze. I don't know. That's a beautiful card, though. McCovey. Beautiful. Newcomb. Don Newcomb. You got the Sheffield on this one, the special FX die cut? Absolutely. Yeah, man, those are cool ones. How about uh, this one? One of my favorite insert sets from the 90s is the uh, Standing O from 99 Upper Deck Ovation. These cards are just so beautiful. 
that's the gold standing O. Bobby Doerr. Palmer. They didn't mess around back in the day with manufactured relics, huh? <laughs> no, man. That's the Sheffield this one, one is nice, too. So how many cards are in that set, Aaron? I don't know. I think it's like 41. I never understood this one. I like it, but I, I never understood it, why they put bat pieces in there. But Well, he was a National League pitcher, at least. So you got a compliment here, Aaron. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you do have you do have a fantastic collection. I I gotta say, man, it's jaw dropping. Here we go, some SPX Radiance cards here I got coming up. These ones are tough to find, man. Yeah. Look at all that hollow foil. This Look was at a set I was putting foil. together too, Nate. This one's this one's actually my favorite right here. That is beautiful. I love this one. What does the one represent there? Pee Wee Reese one. Was it because he's uh, uh leadoff hitter or something? Or was yeah, that his this one number? Yeah. Well, I think what they did was they just whatever their jersey numbers were, um, they just put a relic inside of there for their jersey number. That's cool, man. That's a beautiful piece right there, Aaron. Beautiful uh, card. Thinking, here's a McCovey. Oh, nice. Yeah, number 44. Here's a uh, Casey Stingle. Blue Brock. You see that mail day I did the other day when JT sent me that card? Yeah. So now I got five out of the six. <laughs> These are all numbered to 75. Hey, look at who's here. My buddy Jay. That one, Nate. So... Wow, is that a Marshall Falk? No, Eric Dickerson. Oh, Eric Dickerson. Yeah. Man, that's beautiful. So, Jay, man, we got to get together soon. I don't know when, but we got, I mean, I'll wear a mask. We got to get together soon. <laughs> And I, and I know you. How, how's it work? How's it at work, man? With all this heat, Jay, li, a, a Aaron Jay lives a little north of me, and you, I think it's hot here. He's probably got another five or ten degrees warmer up his way. Wow. I got the black border version of this card too that I'm holding, but it's in a slab. It's numbered to fifty, but that's the gold number to one twenty-five. Oh, man. The bus. Jerome Bettis. Yeah. These ones are nice. The light's not doing these justice, but these ones right here, man, are so beautiful in hand. I bet. They have that rainbow foil across here. Is that kind of like the Ripken? Yeah. But it's such a beautiful card, man. Oh, we got Ace Can Jim here. Matty Ice. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I guess uh, 106 outside in Healdsburg today. That's crazy hot. Man. Oh, man. Did he say it was 106? Yeah, but I guess in the warehouse he works at, it's only 50 degrees. 
So I know Jay would rather be at work today than uh than than, than at home. Check these out, man. Oh, that's beautiful, Aaron. We're gonna have people. We're gonna give people cardboard overload with all these cards we're showing off here today. But, you know, <laughs> know, I'm having man. a great time with you, man. I we always have so much fun sharing our collections. Good times, man. Hey, uh, Jay, if you're on here, someday if if if, if you can't get out to visit me sooner than later, we gotta go live on a live stream. I'll because now that I have Streamyard. I want to do a. I want to have you on as a guest on my channel. But Aaron, you would love Jay's collection, man. He he collects a lot of relic Hall of Fame sets like you. Nice. The Sweet Spot Classic. I think Jay's working on that one, if I remember correctly. <clears throat> you know which one? Uh, Upper Deck Sweet Spot Classic. Now I'm going to get into some Panini yeah, stuff. Sweet, right, the Sweet Spot Classics. Yeah. Now this card, when I bought it, it was in a slab and it looked horrible. It was in a Beckett slab. Mm. Aaron, I think you were with me when I cracked it. Yeah. Doesn't this look better in the mag than it did in that Beckett slab? Oh, absolutely. That Beckett slab was driving me nuts. Man, but look at it. It has a sapphire in there. That's such a beautiful card, man. Yeah, it, what a classic image! A nice black and white image in the in in his uh, Arizona State Sun Devils uniform. Barry Barry Lamar Bonds. Yes, sir. The goat, baby. Is that Kurt Warner? No, that's Cam Newton. Oh, Cam, man, see, <laughs> I'm having problems seeing this afternoon. Yeah, this one. I remember, man, this Damn, car. Damn, man. h 10 Jim's got 106 degree weather, too. Holy cow. This one's, a, this one's a super short print, Nate. Oh, is that the one you were chasing in 2011? Yeah. And I can't, yeah. I, I'm we telling you, man. Earlier. I, it's just crazy. Aaron, let me just tell you this. <laughs> I'm sure glad you pulled that card. Yeah, you know you're chasing. <laughs> Look at this beauty right here. This is a diamond relic. Oh card. man, that's fantastic. Look at this. Check this out, man. I'm telling you, wow. Panini. I, I just love Panini, man. I know a lot of people don't like them, but how could you go wrong with these two beauty beauties right here, man? Yeah, I love. I absolutely right. gorgeous baseball cards. I remember the first time I saw those, uh, I think I saw Russo doing right the flawless out of the suitcase. And every suitcase had like a, a, a card with a gemstone in it. Yeah. And I was so happy they put bonds in that set. Just something different for the collection. Oh, man, Frank. Frankie. Frank for the win. Man, one of the most... Underrated players in, I think, MLB history. Considering he, you know, he he was he did a lot of firsts and he won a triple crown and just yeah, so many, so many um, career accomplishments. They they put a lot of Bond stuff in his Arizona uniform. If you can believe it, these are these are two different cards. It's hard to tell on my camera. Man, it's even hard to tell when I'm looking at them. What's the difference? Oh, man, the only difference is the, the foil on the bottom here is shiny, and then the top one isn't. <laughs> wow. Yeah, those are, those are excellent cards, man. Yeah. This one, I got the one numbered to 25. I got to track down the one numbered to 99. Timeless treasures. I don't, I don't look at my Panini cards that often, so it's, I'm, I'm enjoying this right now. Is Sheffield in this set, Aaron? Uh -huh. Is Sheffield in this set? 
from 2014 yeah. Panini. Uh, this one here, I got this one number to 25 for like 20 bucks. What a bargain. Oh, Eric Dickerson. I remember when in the 80s when the Niners would be playing the um, Rams and Dickerson was on special teams too. You know, he'd, he'd run back the uh, kickoffs. And I remember I used to always worry he was going to run it back for a touchdown when they, when they uh, kicked off to the Rams. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Remember him doing the uh, on special teams? You had a lot of like a lot of those guys play special teams back in the day too, you know. Absolutely. It's your future Hall of Famer right here, Reggie Wayne. Nice. Nice beauty. I love this card right here. Yeah. That's some cracked ice right there for your eye. That's just that's just beautiful, man. And look at this rainbow here. Antonio Gates, another future Hall of Famer. Check out this rainbow, man. I yeah, I I I, I should look at these cards more often. These are the uh, Panini. These are the national pack cards. I didn't go to the national the years these came out. I think it was like 2016 national, but they were giving out some mighty fine cards. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Those are beauties, man. This one's not numbered, but the state of print runs 99. For Look at that. And then you got this one here, numbered to 50. Yeah, that's Look at that beautiful nice. shine. And then this one here is numbered to 25, I believe. Yeah. Look at that. Would you look at that? This one's numbered to 10. And if that's not enough, Aaron Davis... This thing is incredible. Number to five. Damn. I remember when this card popped up, I was so glad that I found it. And these are the type of cards, when the product launches, you got to buy them right away because they were all over the place. And then they dried up. Now, you know, I haven't seen one pop up on eBay. Any of these version variations pop up on eBay in a couple of years. Check so I thought I got one I did. Or else I'd never own them. This stack Ooh. right here because the great the greatest running backs in history, <laughs> right here. Is Roger Craig in there? You got <laughs> Bill Dudley, 1948. Let's here. I'm gonna Charlie Trippy, 1948. Monsters, man. Steven Van Buren, monster. Is that 48 Bowman or? Yeah, 48 Bowman. Ollie Madsen, monster. I've heard you talk about Ollie before. John Johnson, a monster. I love that card right there. Well, is that a 54? Yeah, that's a, fi that's a 55. Uh, five. Wow, those are beautiful, man. Any more? 56. I know what's coming up here pretty soon. Paul Horgan, 57. Wasn't he at the National that year? Yeah. At 2017? There it is. Jim Brown, 58. Jim Taylor, 59. Incredible, Aaron. And great, incredible. great Gail Sayers. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Seven. Leroy Kelly. 67. 
And, and what, what's your brand on those? Uh, That's the Philadelphia brand. Yes. I love those Philadelphia cards. The great Floyd Little from 68. 69, Larry Zonka. That, that's such a beautiful football card right there. 1970, OJ. Wow. 72, John Riggins. Incredible. There's the 77, Tony Darset. Wow, man, that guy was so good when I was a kid. Remember 79, him? 79, Earl Campbell. Wow. 83, Marcus Allen. 84, Marcus Eric Allen. Dickerson. 89, Barry Sanders. 93, Jerome Bettis. Wow, beautiful. The bus. 94, Marshall Falk. 95, Curtis Martin. It was incredible with the greatest show on Curtis Martin. And 2001, um, LaVeyne Thomason. Damn, Aaron. <laughs> you guys – few guys in there that uh i i don't have them in the stack but uh terrell davis oh yeah uh, walter payton those are a couple of guys that uh i don't have in here but uh there's some other monsters too fred taylor from 98 you know those 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 guys were just monsters man but there you go, Nate, from 1948 to now. <laughs> How about the running back from Kansas City? Who? Uh, Christian Okoye. Christian Okoye? Yeah. Monster. Right out here right out here from Azusa Pacific, man. Yeah. That guy was like a freaking offensive lineman running the ball. <laughs> exactly. Man, that, that, you know what? That, that was some eye candy right there. And, I mean, like I always tell you, I'm not much of a football guy, but I'm telling you, them vintage football cards, man, those, those things are beautiful. I think my favorite, favorite year is the 69 with all those colors. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I love 69, man. Such is, a that, now, is that Philadelphia or Tops? Huh? The 69 football cards, are they Philadelphia or Tops? No, they're tops. Okay. I like I like the year where they got the NFL logo on the on top right corner too. Right. Yeah. I'm just showing off another rainbow here. Nice. Panini Prism, man. The only year Bonds was in Prism, so I mean he was in that the national packs. In 2016, and then he and then he was in the uh, the Panini Prism out of the regular packs in 2015. They don't do the tie dye one, maybe maybe they do. I don't know. That tie dye one's cool. Yeah, A tribute to Jackie right here, dude. That's that's a, oh man. Yeah, they did a whole parallel set numbered to 42 for Jackie Robinson. Man, that's beautiful. Yeah. The gold. And then I'm missing the Jeter to two and the black finite to one. But so that's it for all my. Uh, oh, yeah, I got these. Is on eBay. Nice. Did I lose reception? I think I lost re a little bit, Nate. You're going yeah. in and out.
All right. Maybe we ought to end the broadcast if my uh, if my Wi-Fi is uh, crapping out. Go wind it down. So, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here, guys, because if my if if my Wi-Fi is not doing good, there's no point. So sounds good. So thanks so much for tuning in. And here, let's let's both put up a card, whether it works or not. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Oh, it's in battery saver mode. My PC. I know, huh? I'm a Giants guy. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna go out with a Kershaw, but it's just what I grabbed. So happy collecting, everybody. Happy collecting. <laughs> <laughs>